Welcome back to Ask the Professor with a Texas RV professor, Terry Cooper, uh, right over my shoulder there. And I am Dave Dufour here at RVNN.TV. You had a blessed event at the Pickle Jar Ranch in Texas about, what, about a month ago? I and believe it was just about that. Just sure about was. a month ago. And so we thought we would update you. Uh, the this little, this little creature's name is what? Well, she's been named Gertie. Gertie, okay. Because remember, we had to be, we were looking for a name. It had to be a G name. So uh, let's take a look and see how Gertie is doing. Got a whole family there. Oh, yeah. See, now, the strange thing about it, her mom's Georgia Brown, and her daddy is handsome stranger. <laughs> He's got the biggest ego you'd ever want to oh, meet, let me tell you. <laughs> but uh, she is, I've been amazed how this little gal has really gotten her legs, and she is just, fi you know, feisty. You'll see yeah. her just a little bit where she's a hopping and carrying on, and you think, my goodness, girl. But, uh, you, oh, yeah. You know, there you go. They, See, it's they, just like, oh yeah, they wow. do. They jump like crazy, um, right? Yeah, we we always enjoy them down with with our uh, county fair here in, in uh, northern Indiana in, uh, at the Elkhart County Fair. We the goats are always our favorite stop because they're just they're pretty friendly, curious. <laughs> well, I have two in my backyard right now doing my lawn mowing for me. Oh yeah, we call them the organic lawn crew. My so goodness. she's you know she's part of that crew. Gosh, send one of those up for me. I could use a two or three of those little characters. That's uh, yeah. lawn care yeah, There's plus. Handsome Stranger right there. There you go. I would imagine that you don't mess with him much. Well, he is a little protective of his ladies, that's for sure. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, it, to me, I find it very therapeutic to go out there and watch them. You know, uh -huh. of course, if you don't think like grandbabies, you don't have to raise them. Somebody else has to take care of them. So it's kind of nice to go out there and see them and see what's going on and then go leave, you know. There you so. go. Oh, look at that. <laughs> there yeah. she goes. Yeah. Right. Oh, there's the whole gang of them. Yeah. What they're doing is they're moving them to another area where there's uh, a little bit better foliage. Right. I tell you, what, they, when they come in, they just move in like locusts and they just take over. Oh, now this is Caitlin. The, Caitlin's the young lady that named Gertie. Okay. Yeah. And you know, animals are strange. You can't get them to pose for anything. When you want them no. to do something, they won't do it. Yeah, we and just were talking. That we just Gertie. did a show a little bit earlier with Dennis Guillaume, our, our uh, photography. Uh, uh, post and uh, we were talking about how you know it's just really hard to get those uh you know um those uh elk out in the wild to stand there and smile for you just they just don't do it <laughs> pickle jar uh, ranch now, how they... these, these goats right here eat these pears see uh -huh. goats don't have any upper front teeth uh-huh all they have is jaw teeth and then they have some lower bottom teeth up up front right uh say lower bottom the lower teeth on the front end so when they go to chew on something big they really wrestle around with their lips and everything get that sure that device in the right place that's what they're doing is they had cut some pears out of a pear tree for right. them and of course they're having a big feast right and they, they have very unusual looking pupils to their eyes i've always noticed you know they've got that kind of like sort of a vertical pupil well no maybe it's for i forget anyway it ain't round and no. uh, it's it's an odd look to the uh, you kind of wonder what they're thinking there. Uh, it's kind of eerie. Really, yeah, when it is you a think little, a little it, creepy. You know? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Come to think of it, I don't like goats at all. Anyway, I'm just kidding. <laughs> all right. Hey, we were talking about air conditioning before the break, and uh, we've got a question for the professor, and uh, let's let's attack it here. Um, question is, how can I help my air conditioner be more efficient? Wow, there's some things that we can do right off the bat and some things we need to do a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit of maintenance and stuff. And probably the number one thing is is that we've got to reduce the heat gain. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's all the air conditioner is doing. It's just getting rid of the heat inside the RV. So if we reduce that heat gain, it doesn't have to work as hard. Okay. And the next thing is, is of course, we're going to maintain that air conditioner. If you know, if people will just realize that we can do this work ourselves, mm -hmm. and we just do a little bit of a little bit of maintenance on these, we can right. really extend the life of these air conditioners. But 
if we don't do the maintenance, they're going to lay down on us a lot sooner than they thought they would. Okay. Well, you've got uh, six ways to reduce that heat gain. The heat gain, we're talking about the buildup of heat inside the coach that the air conditioner then has to uh, dissipate, right? Exactly. Okay. You know, I'll tell you what was really interesting. I flew out, oh, I guess it's a couple of weeks ago, and I found it interesting that the airlines was asking everyone to close the shade for their window. Right. To limit the amount of heat coming into the, into the aircraft. Sure. And, you know, same thing with us. If we'll just close the curtains, do things that keeps that heat, that sun from just bearing down on us, mm -hmm. we'll reduce some of the heat gain just by blocking some of the sunlight. And that's really important when you're, uh, when you're towing, too, because that, at that, that's the time when something isn't, like on a towable, that, that air conditioner isn't running at all, but heat is building up as you're going down the road. So if you can reduce that as much as possible, does that make sense? Absolutely. That, that's right on the money. I mean, we're not only talking about closing the curtains when you're in it, but how about when you're not in that right. rig? Yeah, so sure. that's, you know, and those are little things that we can do. It doesn't cost us anything. Mm -hmm. You just need to remember these type things. Right. Um, the next thing we need to do is we just need to look at maybe how we use our cook stove and, and our uh, cooktops. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how much heat they generate when we're just doing just some simple, basic cooking there in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. And, you know, why not use our microwave or why not use our grill outside? Right. Do something that takes that heat load off of that kitchen area because here again, let's say if you're just boiling water or you're doing something that has a lot of uh, humidity in it, that air conditioner is going to have to work twice as hard to get rid of the humidity that you have just dumped into the air right. as well as the heat BTU that you have added. So right. if right. you limit that cook stove, you limit that cooktop, that oven, you really start re limiting some of the heat gain that you're doing. Yeah, you, your next one is really almost, that's almost a must, is the, uh, you, to use awnings uh, and to create shade. And it occurs to me that, like, you know, during these, like, transitional months especially, I mean, you, you, you're pretty warm in Texas most of the time, but here in the Midwest there's those transitional months where, you know, use of an awning might even mean that you can just turn the air conditioner off and save a little bit of energy that way. During those periods, when, you know, when it's just just with the use of an awning that creates shade around the unit, um, am I whistling Dixie there? Nope, you're right on the money. You're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. I mean, we need to learn something from some of our uh, our ancestors uh -huh. you know, that lived in these old farmhouses and stuff, and they would do things. They'd have awnings around their windows or have these big front porches that set out away from the house, so it created a shady position, so that way the sun didn't hit didn't strike the walls and come into the windows. Right. We need to do the same thing. And if that awning will block that sun to keep that sun from coming into the windows mm -hmm. or even strike in the sidewall of that rig, man, you've, you've eliminated a lot of heat gain. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the next one here, of course, utilize fans, which is, you're talking about just like house fan type stuff, right? Exactly. Uh, I mean, like we talked about earlier, when you think about what's happening is we're dropping that cool air from the ceiling and dropping it down. Mm -hmm. Why not pick that cool air back up and throw it back around and circulate it again and get a little bit more use out of that temperature sure. or that lack of heat that you've got in that cooler air? Yeah, otherwise you end up with just a, you know, a cold spot and then some warm spots, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And, and it's amazing how just a very inexpensive little fan from one of the big box stores, put it in your living room and you can just put it on low and it's just circulating the air. Mm -hmm. Or maybe even at night, having one in your bedroom and then having that, that air moving around. Because the way the human body's made, I mean, we sense temperature with our skin. And if we can get a little breeze across our skin... Uh, we can really reduce the uh, the temperature on that thermostat. We can maybe sure. bump it up just a little bit so it doesn't have to run quite as long. Right. Uh, th the next thing on your list you mentioned here is install roof vent shades, and I guess I am not familiar with that. What is, what is that all about? Is that like a little awning for the roof vent? Well, typically what you'll see is a couple of different ways that they do this. You know, this is the vent that you crank there in the ceiling so that way a lot of times you can let air in and out. Right, okay, well, gotcha. Well, when you've got the air conditioning on, you're going to have it closed. Mm -hmm. But what happens is that little dome that's on top of that vent is kind of translucent, and so it allows a little bit of the sunlight in. Mm -hmm. And they make a couple of different options that you can use. One is it looks like a large lamb's wool blanket, a little pillow that you shove up in there. Mm -hmm. And basically what that does is that, you know, it does make it a little darker, but it, you block that sunlight from coming in through that vent. Oh, okay, I gotcha. 
And sure. then they also make a shade that looks almost like a slider shade. Um, uh -huh. and, and the best way to describe it is like on the aircraft, you know, where we talked about earlier about okay. you know, raising and lowering the, the window shades in an aircraft. Right, well, they have yeah. the same type of situation. Mount it to the ceiling of the, of the RV, and you just slide it over this vent to block that sunlight. And right. then when you need it, you know, need the sunlight to come in, then you just push it back. Right, right. So it's kind of a roller, a slide, or, you know, they have a couple of different ways that they make those. But here again, you're just trying to keep that sunlight from coming in uh, to block some of that heat gain. Right. Now, the, the, the last thing that you're talking about here is something that we, we talked about uh, recently on a... Uh, um, on an episode of, G of Gadgetplex with Phil May, and he was talking about you know in terms of energy energy conservation, but uh, also uh, it, it it generates they generate less heat, and that is to use these LED uh, light bulbs. Uh, exactly. And those exactly. are those are uh, pretty uh, pretty energy efficient. They're very some of them are very very bright, and uh, they're they're cool. Absolutely. Well, I mean, you know, if you look at just the standard old incandescent bulb that we've had around for years and years, that you know, same kind of bulb you put in your tail light of your vehicle. Mm -hmm. uh, if you really get to looking at some of these plastic lenses, they're they're burnt because you know the bulb got hot and melted the plastic. Mm -hmm. Then a lot of folks, in order to have more light, what they went was with a halogen type of bulb, and I mean, those babies get super hot. I mean, to the point to where you can't even touch them if you need to change them out. You know, mm -hmm. unless you've let them set and cool for a while. Right, So right. if you're generating all that heat, it's going somewhere, and it's going into your living quarters inside your RV. So more heat gain. So here again, you know, you're going to pay just a little bit to change these bulbs out. But once you get the investment made to get them moved, it's amazing. Like, say, you improve the lighting, you save the energy, and you certainly save the heat gain that you get off of these versus what you would get off of the other bulbs, the That's old style right. bulbs, and they also and they also last quite a bit longer as well. So, oh, uh, you, you, and you know, part of it is just because they're cooler; they don't sure. burn themselves out. That's right. Yeah, they they aren't burning in the first place. So, okay, great. Uh, well, we've looked at some ways to uh, uh, to reduce that heat gain, and uh, the next thing we're in the next segment, we're going to look at some ways that you can maintain your RV air conditioner. So, don't go away. Ask the professor. We'll be back in a minute. The Texas RV Professor wants to hear from you. Email your questions or comments to professor at rvnn.tv. If you have a specific problem, it really helps if you can send a photo as well. That makes it easier for Terry to diagnose your issue. You can also leave a voicemail for Terry Cooper at 877-578-RVNN, extension 708. Follow RV NewsNet on Facebook and Twitter, and you can receive text messages to alert you when we're streaming live by texting RVNN to 72727. That way, you can join us live in the chat room, ask questions, and become part of the RV NewsNet family. Remember, any photos or other material submitted to us become the property of RV NewsNet and cannot be returned. For more TV like this from the world of RVs, head to RVNN.tv.